as a broader group in the portfolio, they are addressing a wide range of opportunities and they all have their own individual drivers for growth. So, James, how do you approach the task of investing in these healthcare names, doing so many different things? I think it's a lot of what Tom and I were talking about just there. Uh, in general, around exponential technologies, energy and transport becomes applied to healthcare. You know, I think it's incredibly important, Stuart, that we observe and we try and learn and we try and have contact uh, with the greatest and most innovative companies in this area, as well as trying to put thematics that come from academia on it. And I think that's what we're seeing already. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, as I alluded to at the start, we've had a lot of meetings with Illumina and Grail recent months. And we had a particularly fascinating session with uh, Alex Aravanis, who was the chief scientific officer at Grail, and has now returned to Illumina to supervise the, the combination. And he said, look, what you've got to understand is that if you combine sequencing with machine learning, moving towards AI, then we're getting insights and we're finding indications for healthcare that are running well ahead of our understanding of human biology, which completely reverses the whole process of discovery. And that, in a sense, is what we've been looking for for the last five years, as we hoped but couldn't guarantee that this change would come about. And that, that would morph into the second example, which is one of our unquoted companies, a company called Tempest, based in Chicago, um, who are really beginning to see that just their enormous quantities of data are translating to actionable healthcare recommendations. And you, some of the audience may have seen over the last few days, Tempus have just revealed that what they're offering is a very small dice-like uh, device, which will go in hospital oncologist's pocket to be able to provide them effectively with AI answers to all the queries they have. Or, you know, to go back to that conversation I mentioned with John Kay, as John said, uh, heaven help the standard general practitioners of the future. Maybe to maybe to just sort of pull out a, that that point and 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 do a compare and contrast here. Um, if you if you think of, of where we are in consumer internet and look at some of our past holdings, um, these companies, Twitter, Facebook, have um, used AI to process huge volumes of data and, and created interesting business models out of it. But the stage they're at in that process are grappling with some of the implications of that. You know, who decides how um, opinions are disseminated? You know, how, who, who should surface the content to me in, in, in my timeline, in my feed? Who makes those decisions? How does AI make those decisions? And so the, the, the phase you're at is not about growth or innovation, but it's actually dealing with the consequences of those challenges. And you know, that's now, in, in, in our view, weakening the investment case for some of these companies just because of where the focus is, where the attention is, where the energy is going. But compare that to what's happening in, in, in the areas we're talking about. You know, if you were doing um, genetic research um, 10 years ago, you know, as, as a PhD, you would research one gene and you'd go and you would um, either knock, it, knock that gene out or amplify that gene in, a, in an animal model and then look what the, the consequences were of, of, of taking that action, study the, 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 the data that arose from that. And you do it one gene at a time. And, and having found out some of the consequences, you then would enter into very laborious um, um, scientific programs to actually go in and intervene and, and see what you could do around that. Take that forward to where we are today. There are 7 billion humans on the planet. They each have um, 6 million genetic uh, variation, unique genetic variations. 
So there's a vast data set, which you can then compare against phenotypic data. So what is, uh, you know, what can you say about the health of that individual? What are the health problems? And you, you can do that. You, what that means is instead of going gene by gene, you can look at massive scale at the implications of millions of variants on different states of disease simultaneously. But you can only do that if you can handle the data sets. You can only do that if you can deploy machine learning against those data sets. And then that takes you to looking at the pathways of action. Um, there's a whole new set of tools that allow you to act quickly on, um, in, in terms of finding interventions against those, those, those um, pathways, um, I, you know, either at a genomic level or at a protein level or at a small molecule level. Um, and that's a really interesting machine learning computer science problem. You know, that's where the innovation is. That's where the action is at. Um, and, and that's where we see some of the really interesting opportunities in, in broadly defined healthcare.